Okay, so we're into the manure manager planner. Um, if you know fields tabs, they're in there. We've got all the field numbers, the acres, spreadable size, distance to miles to uh, the storage structure, which we just done in that other video. Um, also under assessment, we've got distance to water. All those are important calculations. Um, I need to front out cover this first page first. I'll fill that out and I'll bring it back up. Okay, so this is what I filled in so far as far as information up the top here. You could do that all the same. The first three lines under contact, put in your name, uh, not my name. Uh, this is my office phone number. You're welcome to use that or you can put your own in there if you want. Your email address would go in there. I put in a note here. This was created for the IGA 212 class, Winnesheet County. Um, starting year is this year. I'm doing this in January 2019. The starting month is not January because um, the manure for the crop year 2019 already went on last fall. So we're actually going to be starting our manure plan as of September, which will be the more manure for 2020 if we look at it that way. Years in plan will be five. The setbacks, I'm going to click on that, and I'm just going to go with the NRCS standard. There are a couple different standards we can go by, but we'll just stick with the NRCS. Um, that uses the, that information and some of the calculations we come on with as we look here. Um, so that's that first page. Next page is field. And all that information came out of that big mapping project that we just got done with and mapping out all the fields for the college. Here's our field IDs we put in. We didn't do any subfield IDs, which is fine. Uh, the acres there, what's going to be spread on. There's that distance that we did for each of the different fields from the storage structure. Obviously the county, it picked up the soils from the uh, clipper that we used. Um, so that's all calculated in there. Um, it's going to take the average slope. So in other words, for this first field, it's 5 to 9. So it'll put in a slope of 7 in the calculation. If I want it different than that, I can override that by putting that in here. But we're going to go ahead and leave it and let it calculate itself. Is it irrigated? No. Is it not owned? We would check those if we wanted to. Here's a watershed ID in there. It automatically picked up. Um, then some of these other numbers, if I want, I could put them in. For our purpose for this class, we're just going to leave those blank. Uh, so that page is done. We come to the assessments now. Um, again, here's what they're going to go with things here. Um, then we've got to think, okay, what was the type of water for those fields? And that really, I need to bring up my map again. Um, but for field one, it was the pond. And I'll pause there for a minute. So again, i got to come back here and look at my map, and you look at field 1, field 7, field 8, field 9, and field 11. Um, if we look at those diagrams, those all went to the pond. So I'm going to label those as a pond. So I filled those in for those fields. And then the remainder of the fields are all coming over, and we're going to all call these a perennial stream. So these streams coming through here that I put these all to are perennial streams, not intermittent. That's pretty much got water in them most of the time. So the rest of the fields will be labeled as perennial streams. Okay, so if I look at this table now, I've got all the perennial streams and the ponds filled out where the water goes to. Slope length, I'm not going to worry about that. And some of these others, I'm not going to worry about. Um, artificial drainage, we don't have any artificial drainage on this farm except for a few tile lines off the terraces. So I'm going to leave that out, no artificial drainage. Uh, manure applied annu alre annually already, I'm not going to have anything on there is what I'm saying right now. Um, if I want it to not receive manure, I will designate that here. But in this case, I want manure everywhere I can put it. Um, and we're not going to do any of the count and numbers on these other things here too because that's going to be taken care of here in a little bit. Um, soil test, this is where I'm going to put in the soil tests that have been taken for the farm. Um, I'll give you that information for this farm um, as we've got this put together here in just a second. I'll put those in there so you can see those numbers and I'll have those numbers available for you. Okay, so here's all the soil test information for fields 1 through 11. You can see those numbers there. If I scroll on down, you can see uh, the remaining ones, I'll get this information printed out and put in the bright space so you can get it to, or you can pull it off the screen right now if you want to click pause. Um, one other thing, we didn't fill out a lot of the columns, but last column here, soil pH, uh, we did fill that out there through 16, and if we scroll to the top, there's the first ones also. So that's what you need to fill out in this page. Um, the rest of this we really don't need to fill out. We're not going to be that critical to what we're doing with our manure management plan. Um, that leads us then to the next topic and that is crops and this is where we're going to determine what planned crop or second crop if double cropping um, for each of the years as we roll through this and you notice there's a lot of things in here um, as we're going through this um, but essentially um, we're going to have continuous corn silage on this entire farm um, so we're going to pull all the alfalfa off but from here on out we're going to have continuous corn silage so we're just going to pick corn silage and you go all the way down Put in corn silage all the way down. Um, you go on that corn silage is going to be 25 tons per acre. Uh, we're going to leave all the legumes out of this. Um, so again, fill that all the way down as you do that. 
So again, I went all the way down from field 16, put everything out as a corn silage. Obviously on your own farm operation, you put in whatever rotation you feel is going to work through there. Um, just to keep this one simple, I just went continuous corn silage. We do have some alfalfa out there, um, but that's some of that's being plowed up. Again, put in your yield 25 all the way down. Okay, so now that we have all that information in, we're going to click on this Russell 2 button. And that's what they use to calculate soil erosion. And um, I have to scroll it around just to make sure it fits all on your screen. Um, it's got this selected climate lo location. I have not selected that yet. So we're going to click on that. Um, we're in the USA, um, Iowa. Um, and we're just going to say Winnesheet County. Uh, sometimes it'll default and select that already. For some reason it didn't on mine. And then the soil survey, we're going to again select up here in Winnesheet County. Click OK. Um, and then down here, it'll put a bunch of information on depending on the soils. In case this one um, says 150 based on slope, so we're fine with that. We'll leave the rest of this as is we go down here. Um, and then um, down toward the bottom, this is where it's saying it's corn silage, no management's been selected. So we're going to come in here and select. And after you hit that select button, we'll come up with this. This is CMZ4. This is a preloaded one. You can actually, as you saw, there was a customized button. You could create your own. Uh, since we're strictly corn silage, we're going to pull up the single year crop template. And we're going to come down to row crops. And then we're going to double click on corn silage. So I'm just double clicking in these to open them up. And we're a no-till operation here. So here's corn silage no-till. And it puts in all the different application things that would go along with that. Again, I can customize this if I want. But for the purpose of this project, we're just going to accept what's in there. Um, and then we're ready to go here as this is done. Okay, so we've got that done. Um, that's my corn size coming up. Um, and it's off the screen here. I apologize. It didn't quite capture everything. But right below this part here, it lists crop. And if you click the arrow there, then it'll go to the next crop, which is corn silage again, and corn silage again for that field every year. Um, there's also a button down there for field, so I can go between the different fields, okay? Uh, in my case, everything's corn silage, but on your own farms, you may have some different crops. Well, the nice thing is, okay, with the corn silage, there's also a duplicate button down here. So I'm just going to click duplicate, um, and all the fields with the same crop rotation, I'm going to just click OK. And it duplicated it for all 15 fields. Um, once you've got all the crops entered, you can just click again. You can do the next crop, duplicate that, um, and it'll take care of all that on its own. Okay, so that can take care of everything for 2020. We'll just go down, down on the bottom again. I'm off the screen on that crop. You hit the down arrow. That switches to 2021 crop. <clears throat> again, we go through that process. We click the select button, which will bring up those choices of what we can do for management. And call CMZ4. Again, single year, um, single crop rotation, since that's what I'm doing here. Um, and I'm going to go row crop, corn silage, and corn silage no-till, and click OK. And again, hit that duplicate button down at the bottom, and I'll duplicate it for all the fields. So you need to go that through that for every year if you're using the single crop template. Using the multi-year template on your own farm, it's a little bit different, but you'll, you'll figure that out. If you just play with it a little bit, it's interesting how things work out. I'll pause while I finish up these fields. So once you get that all done, um, there's a couple buttons left on the bottom you can play with. If you click on the check data button, what that'll do is basically it'll show you what it's calculated for that particular field. Show you all the operations that it's included as well down here to soil loss for that field. Um, as you look at it. You can also have a button down there to check P-Risk. Basically that'll do the Iowa P-Index for you. Um, actually prints it out, I believe, as a Word document, as a separate document that you can take a look at. Um, again, you can play with that. It's not something you have to do at this point. Um, once you get all that done, you just click Close and we're essentially done with the Russell 2 uh, calculations and the crops page. So the next tab we have is actually storage structure and the storage ID. I'm just going to call it tank. Um, we'll talk about the big tank outside. Um, and in that big tank, um, basically uh, storage information, it's a, um, if I can find the information here, um, um, outside prefab liquid storage is what that is. Um, gallons, and I can, I'm going to say it's a million gallon tank. I um, can't remember right offhand what's in there. I probably should check on that, but we'll, we'll say it's a million gallon tank for the purpose of this exercise. It's 100,000, that's a million. Um, as we look at it, 
Um, we're going to say it's empty right now. Um, well, actually, let's just say, yeah, because at the start of September, when we start this plant, there's going to be manure in there. Uh, let's say there's 600,000 gallons in it at the start of this plan as you look at it. Um, let's scroll back over. We don't need to put any notes on that one. We also have a pit structure up here, so we're going to call this um, underneath our building. We have a pit structure, and that's going to be um, first in, uh, see, daily scraping hall, underfloor, dry storage. No, it's not dry storage, actually. Um, underfloor liquid storage. Uh, we're going to call that gallons, and we're just going to say that's 300,000. I'm guessing again. My apologies for not having that information. And we'll say there's 200,000 in there right now as we look at it. Um, so that takes care of the storage structure. And the next tab is my animals. And we're going to basically divide it into two groups. We can do more than that. Well, actually, let's um, just say um, um, first group is going to be um, pit structure. Underground pit, excuse me. Under building pit. And the animals that are in there are um, milk cows, dairy. Average weight, we're going to put them at 1,500 pounds. Again, I'm throwing some guesses out here for numbers. Uh, some people are going to plan that and get it right. right. Um, I believe we have about 50 animals in that area. Um, and they are present from January early all the way to December late. So um, percent of manure collected is 100%. As we look at it, we're not going to say any extra water in there. Um, bedding, we're not going to put, uh, uh, we'll put in about five pounds a day for bedding um, because they do get some, um, let's go, yeah, let's go five pounds a day, um, some sawdust in there, and this is going to be in the pit. Um, the next group of animals is going to be um, the robot, or let's just say uh, parlor, um, and this is the rest of the parlor animals that aren't through that pit. And again, we're going to call those um, milk cows, same as above. Um, and I'll finish filling this out, and then we'll talk about it. Go ahead and put all the groups. We have the other group of parlor, which are Holsteins going in there primarily. They're up 1,500 pounds, um, 100 animals there, uh, January, early December, late, 100 there. Um, then on the robot, we got a Holstein group and a Jersey group. They're different weights. Um, again, I'm guessing at the weights here. Uh, some of you may want to correct me on that. Um, bedding is only in that one pit. Everything else is sand bedding, so we're not going to include that in our construction here. Obviously, we probably should be listing that separate as a different structure too, but these other three groups all go out in the tank outside. So that takes care of my animals and what's going on. Rations, I'm not going to worry about the rations. This will allow it to basically adjust the analysis as we look at it. Instead, we're going to put analysis in here. And I'm going to right now take the standard analysis, but ideally, and I don't have the test results with me right now, um, you would have it tested and put the actual test results in there. Um, and you could just override these and put the actual test results in there as a measured result as we look with that. But this, we'll just take the standards, and mostly I expect probably we'll take the standard. Um, just to keep it simple and straightforward. Um, so the next tab is equipment, and basically on the farm operation, we use a hose system um, that we pull out there so we don't have to haul anything. Um, hose pull, knives up, actually it's going to be injected there. Um, spreader pump capacity. Don't know the exact answer there, but I'm going to say you could probably pump about 800 gallons per minute there. Um, his minimum application rate, in other words, if he wants to get down to very minimum, um, they're going to want to do at least 8,000 gallons per acre as they're pulling out there and it's to say it's a 16 foot wide rig so that takes care of that page except for some notes at the end if you want to put any kind of notes and that takes us to the nutrient management page and this is where we're actually now going to determine how much manure is going to go on each field so now we got to go down to the fields and actually put this manure on well we say this H means harvest so they actually have put the calendar in here uh, this is planting as we look at it and you go along and harvest and planting as we go through this Scenario. So let's say we harvest it in, in September and October is when we're going to put the manure on. So on this field, uh, what's the source? Well, let's just say it takes out of the tank. It's going to be hosed. We're going to incorporate it within one day. And then what's the rate per acre? Well, I want to put on my maximum allowable rate. So I'm going to click maximum allowable rate um, and click accept that. And that's how much I'm going to put on. Area covered is listed there, and it fills out the rest of it as it goes across there. 
and shows what's going on. We still have some manure to get rid of. Um, so I'm going to go to field two, same thing. <clears throat> I'm going to go to the tank, application equipment, hose, um, one day to incorporate. We're going to calculate the maximum allowable rate. Um, yeah, for some reason, it doesn't want me to allow that. So maybe I can't put anything on that one. So since there's an error there, we'll assume it's probably too high on the P index. So we're going to go to one year crop P needs instead, just to meet our phosphorus needs. Um, that allows us to get that in there um, and put that in. Go down to the next field um, and continue to do that through all your fields for that fall harvest rate as we go down through. Um, well, as you work down and you keep putting maximum allowable weight, sometimes it allows you, sometimes it doesn't. Obviously, that's somehow tied to the P index. Um, we've talked about that before. Get down to about field seven, and we've actually used up all the manure from the tank, and we're getting in now to the pit area for field eight. So for field eight, we're going to select a different structure now. Instead of the tank, we're going to go to pit and get that emptied out. So again, once I get down here and I get down through field 11, I essentially used up all manure in the fall as we looked at that um, and gone through that. Um, again, I always use maximum allowable of weight unless it didn't me, and then I use um, one year P rate otherwise. So, probably didn't get rid of all my manure for the year, so the next time I'm going to put manure on um, is going to be coming here in the spring. I'm probably going to try and get out there in April and finish out my manure applications. Um, so, I've got more manure again in the spring. Um, so, I'm going to kind of have to come down here and um, start out with my tank. Um, Calculate that, maximum allowable rate. I'm um, not going to let me do that. Whoops, I, excuse me, i got to finish up the information there. I've got to have my equipment in here, hose, one year. Um, calculate uh, maximum allowable rate. Um, see if it lets me do that on this field. Um, no, it doesn't, so I'm one year crop needs again. We're going to accept that. So then I'm going to go down with the remaining fields that I have um, and see if I can get rid of manure in the spring. And if I'm not, then I've got some leftover I've got to get rid of somewhere else. Um, so that's the process for the year. So yeah, I get into the spring, I go through the rest of the fields. Again, I put on a maximum rate in the fall on the first field, so I can't put anything in on the spring because we're at the maximum for the year. I get down to field 16, all my fields are covered, and I notice in the spring I still have 175,000 gallons on the tank and 182,000 gallons in the pit to get rid of. So that's part of my planning. Hopefully I've got somebody else that's taking a spring. Most people are going to want to put it in the fall instead of the spring, so I may have to go back and delete some of the fall applications and sell that um, so I can put some manure back onto those fields in the fall. So that's the plan as we look at it and get them out applied. Obviously, that's just one year that we work through. Um, we haven't done the other years, um, but for practicality for this exercise, we're just going to do one year because we've got so many fields and so much that we're working with on this college farm. So that's what we got through. We're going to make sure we save it. Um, yes, I'm ready to save the plan. Um, again, we're just doing one year, but normally you'd go out and do all five years. When you do this project on your own, yes, you'll do all five years. Okay, so the final thing we're going to do is come into Tools, and we've got the Iowa DNR Manure Manager Plan forms, which we can do. There are five different ones. Um, if I can expand it. Um, you'd have to print out each one of those, but since we're doing this kind of on a national basis, for some of you are not from the state of Iowa, we're going to come down to the national um, NRCS format document maker and we're going to make a comprehensive nutrient manager plan document. So I'm just going to click on that and I'm going to run that custom tool and you see it's going to put it out in a Word document. Run custom tool. Um, it created that. It put it in that folder where everything at. So we're going to click OK. Just kind of remember where that folder is at because we're going to open that up here in a little bit. So you'll start, you'll start making your Word document. It's going to put everything into that document. It's going to put in that path. Again, remember, you got to have remember where that path is so you can go find it. Um, it's going to take a minute or so. Put all this information into the National Comprehensive Management Plan document, um, which is not acceptable in Iowa. We still have to use the Iowa plan in Iowa. But you've got all the documents for Iowa you could do also off of this plan. Um, but for this class, like I said, we're going to do one more of a generic one that goes with it. So I'll pause that until that's created. Then we'll go ahead and open it up. So when it finally gets done, it opens up in a Word document, as you can see here, and this is your plan. There's a place for your signature in that on there um, as you look at it. Um, but this is really what you need to submit to me. Um, one of the things here says maps of existing farmstead and conservation practices. Um, you notice that's blank. That's because it didn't bring the map in. So 
what I can do with that is go back to my GIS software with the maps on it, um, turn everything, well, we can turn off the distance things, um, but turn on the terraces, the ponds, the grass waterways, the setbacks, um, that information. So I have all that information available um, in my map, and then I'm going to come up, come up here to edit, and then under the edit menu, you can export this map if you want. Um, and I'm just going to make it a JPEG because it's kind of a smaller file and I'm going to call it NICC Farm and we're going to make a new one. And I, I will call it Dairy Foundation. So I have a different name because I did this earlier, um, MMP. Um, and I'm saving it in my NICC Farm folder so we'll click save there. Then come in back in my Word document and click, the, click insert. And then we come out our illustrations, down arrows, hopefully it just comes up. Sometimes you have to do something different because I'm just writing this down. We'll go to pictures. And then we'll go find that image. And there it is, Dairy Foundation MMP plan. We're going to click insert. And that'll put that in. Um, whoops, put it in the wrong place. Sorry about that. We're going to undo that again. Um, go on down here. I'll do that again. i got to make sure I click in this area here before I do the insert. And that will insert that image in there, and then I can go on down. The rest of my document is as it needs to be. Um, you can look at that, and essentially that shows what's been done. Um, we don't have everything filled out here. Obviously, we didn't go through some of this information. Some, we didn't have some pasture and some other things in there um, as we look at some of this information. Um, come on down here, predicted soil erosion is listed. And we didn't go all five years of our plan either. We only did one year. So uh, that's what you need to submit to me. Hopefully uh, this was helpful in uh, project yeah, it took some time, but um, interesting project.